Hey everyone, and welcome to our early look PvP melee tier list for the up and coming expansion Shadowlands. This tier list has been put together using our expert opinions and rank one consultants based off of early beta arena gameplay and patch notes. This means a lot of what you see may be subject to change. What this tier list will offer though is a first look at what's doing well and why when it comes to PvP. We will be releasing a more solidified tier list shortly after the release of Shadowlands once we have finalized patch notes and tuning. Before we get started though, if you're as bored of BFA as we are and excited for Shadowlands, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring that bell for more up-to-date Shadowlands content in the future. For this tier list, we're going to be placing our melees into four tiers, ranging from the lowest tier, C, up to the strongest, S. Kicking things off, we've got our first addition to our lowest tier, which is C. Fury Warriors. Fury is no stranger to the bottom of our PvP tier list throughout BFA and Shadowlands isn't looking to change that unfortunately. Although that being said, Fury is looking to be in a much better spot coming into Shadowlands with old abilities returning such as Intervene, Shattering Throw, and even Ignore Pain to the Warrior class as a whole. And of course we can't forget the return of Single-Minded Fury, giving them the option to run with dual one-handed weapons again. Sadly though, these additions have done nothing to bolster Fury up our rankings as they still suffer the same inherent flaws from BFA. They have low consistent damage compared to their arms counterpart, a lot less utility, and most importantly, their lack of a mortal strike effect heavily limiting composition choice. One of Fury's best talents that they had going for them in BFA, Thirst for Battle, has also been removed and replaced with the new addition, Blood Rage, which is much weaker in comparison. But simply put, less utility and damage than Arms Warriors and lacking a Mortal Strike solidifies Fury their spot in our bottom tier. Joining Fury Warriors, we have another familiar face, Enhancement Shamans. Enhancement has seen a mini rework, going into Shadowlands with a lot of new additions, including the return of Maelstrom Weapon, Flame Shock, Frost Shock, and even Wind Fury Totem, with also an updated talent tree and new additions like Stormkeeper and Elemental Blast. This results in a playstyle similar to that of Warlords of Draenor Enhancement Shaman, focusing on a lot of small cooldowns for their rotation. Damage-wise, Enhancement is actually a big improvement from how they are in BFA, bringing some decent damage both in single target and AoE. And I can see Enhancements having a few decently strong niche melee cleaves, such as Turbo, due to Wind Fury Totem and Shamanism. Sadly though, why they find themselves in our lowest tier, again, is that Enhancements' biggest issue has still not been addressed and that's their lack of survivability, which has actually gotten worse with the addition of Maelstrom Weapon, reducing their off healing. Moving on, our next addition I think is going to make a few people smile, me included. Going into our lowest tier, we've got Demon Hunters. Yes, you heard that correct. The Kings of BFA Melee and everybody's favorite class has had a very big fall from grace. DH was so good due to a lot of borrowed power. Things like Gushing Wound, Reaping Flames, Azerite Traits, all were insanely strong for DHs. Now, moving forward, these are of course no longer part of their kit. First of all, though, there is something to mention. Demon Hunters are getting a Mortal Strike attached to their Felrush in the form of a PvP talent. While you may roll your eyes here and say of course they do, keep listening. Demon Hunters have been nerfed in almost every single aspect. No longer will they dodge every single attack you throw at them, as now Blade Dance's dodge component has been removed. Blur and Netherwalk have also been nerfed, and even their self-healing has been addressed with a big nerf to their overall leech. Hitting Demon Hunters defensively has made them one of the easiest classes to kill, which definitely isn't something I thought I would ever say. Damage-wise, Demon Hunters have also seen a hit, with big nerfs to Demonic and a lot of their overall damage. But the additions of Cleansed by Flame and Mortal Rush and still having access to Mana Rift will mean that Demon Hunters, despite being weak, will still more than likely find themselves a spot in the meta, just won't be dominating it for once. Another unlikely culprit finding themselves in our lowest tier is Feral Druids. Feral has seen a lot of nice new additions, Empowered Affinities now giving improved spells like Typhoon, Incapacitating Roar, and even Ursul's Vortex. Beyond that, Empowered Offhields or Tankiness from Heart of the Wild, and even new baseline abilities like Cyclone, Barkskin, and Iron Fur. So it sounds pretty good, right? Well, yeah, it does. Ferals have an insane kit when it comes to utility, and even defensively are very strong. What they lack at the moment is damage. Almost similar to Demon Hunters, Feral Druids relied a lot on Reaping Flames, Azerite Traits, and Trinkets to deal a lot of their damage. Power they more than likely won't have access to in Shadowlands. That being said though, if they have their numbers buffed, Ferals have the potential to quickly climb the ranks. 
All right, that concludes our C tier. Jumping up to our next, we've got B, in which our first edition is again another spec unfamiliar with the lower end of our list, Assassination Rogue. Now, don't get me wrong, Assassination is by no means bad. It remains to be relatively the same from what it was in BFA. High consistent damage, moderate cooldown burst damage with Vendetta, and the ability to cleave, with some new additions such as Shiv being baseline and Slice and Dice returning to all rogues packs. But with Assassination remaining to be basically the same as it currently is in BFA, and with now Poison, something that was previously unique to Assassination being available to all rogues packs, it seems Assassination just has been left behind. They are simply unable to compete with the burst, mobility, or control that sub rogues now bring, which means that Assassination finds itself firmly in our B tier, but by no means a weak spec, just now lacking that X factor that some of the higher specs on this list have received going into the new expansion. Our next spec rolling into our B tier is going to be Retribution Paladins. Rets are actually performing to an okay standard on the beta, and are very similar to how they play in BFA, having the same strengths and weaknesses. Rets still have some of the highest burst in the game during their Avenging Wrath, with old abilities returning like Hammer of Wrath. But the same core issues remain, lack of any reliant slow, and nothing has been done about their mobility, sadly. Consistent pressure is still lacking as well, which is sad because Rets have very clear weaknesses that are super easy to improve upon, mobility, consistent damage, and their lack of slows. That being said though, Rhett will still keep most of their powerful utility with Sank, Bop, and Freedom, with new additions such as Word of Glory and Blessing of Sacrifice being baseline. So a lot of their strengths remain and have even been improved upon with new auras, even more utility and incredibly powerful off heals, combined with the high burst that we know secures Retribution a spot in our B tier. Sticking with the B tier, we've got a new addition that's grappled up the ranks, Outlaw Rogues. Outlaw's major issues were its lack of damage, lack of a mortal strike effect, and how reliant it was on RNG. Well, all of these issues have actually been improved upon going into Shadowlands. And all of Outlaw's strengths still remain. The power of True Bearing reducing the cooldown of your stuns and CDs, the addition of Gouge on top, and the super strong PvP talents in Plunder Armor and Thick as Thieves. Like all rogue specs, Outlaw now has access to poisons, which in turn gives them a mortal strike in Wound Poison. They've also had their damage numbers improved upon and some very nice quality of life changes like the new roll to bones, no longer costing combo points, as well as having a cooldown and being reduced by restless blades and true bearing outlaw is looking in a much better spot. Combined with other additions like the reworked between the eyes, outlaw further fulfills that almost ranged pirate-esque theme. So if you've enjoyed outlaw in previous seasons, the future of Shadowlands is looking bright. Our last addition, harpooning into our B tier is going to be survival hunters. The go-to spec for all hunters for the entirety of BFA has received barely any changes at all to talents and rotation, still focusing heavily around melee damage with the addition of some ranged abilities like Wildfire Bomb and Kill Command. The new additions it has received are very strong tools in PvP. Killshot gives survival some much needed finishing power. Hunter's Mark is some extra damage and the addition of Tranquilizing Shot gives survival a short cooldown purge. Scare Beast is also a welcome return giving hunters some nice outplay potential. So. What is holding survival back from reaching higher on this list, despite them being pretty much the same with just some extra additions? Well, survival was one of the main abusers of borrowed power from BFA. Tools like Reaping Flames, Corruption, and powerful Azerite traits like Latent Poison on top of Trinkets adding a lot of extra burst during setups made the spec incredibly powerful. Losing all these third-party sources has really hurt survival's damage output and viability going into Shadowlands which unfortunately isn't set to improve with the addition of Legendaries or Covenants. But don't fret as Marksman is looking to be a very powerful spec and the go-to for Hunters in Arena. Alright everyone, that concludes our B tier. Before we jump up to our penultimate tier, let's quickly recap on how the tier list is looking so far. Alright then, moving on to our A tier, our first edition charging in is going to be Arms Warrior. If you're an avid warrior fan, then you should be excited, as ARMS is looking to be insane going into Shadowlands. ARMS has one of the strongest utility-based melee kits there is, having access to all of the same abilities it had in BFA, such as Duel, Disarm, War Banner, War and Commander, the list goes on. Well, this already overloaded kit is set to improve, 
with the return of some old favorites such as Intervene and Shattering Throw. Intervene offers warriors even more utility, giving them the ability to make insane plays such as taking kidney shot from teammates or just in general improving their mobility, one of Arms Warrior's prior weaknesses. This can then even be improved upon with the new PvP talent Overwatch, making your Intervene give your ally Spell Reflection for 5 seconds, and Spell Reflect is also now baseline. The aforementioned Shattering Throw is also an improved version, which now also works on shields, giving the ability a lot more value as it can be used on things like Rapture Shields or even Monk Cocoons to deal extra damage. So they've got bundles of team utility, very high single target pressure, a mortal strike effect, and even Sharpened Blade will secure warriors a spot in the meta playing either cleaves or melee healer compositions. The only reason ARMS isn't being placed into our S tier is just how strong our S tier spec is right now. Up next, we've got Windwalker Monks. Windwalker is a spec that again hasn't seen too much change. As we know though, they were already extremely strong previously, and the changes that they have received have all greatly improved Windwalker inside of PvP. Reverse Harm is now baseline, with a PvP talent that can improve upon it. Fortifying Brew is also baseline. This opens up a lot of variations for PvP talents. The ability to summon our little tiger friend is also now a baseline ability and is set to be one of Monk's strongest cooldowns, dealing some ridiculous damage. The ability to now use two-handers for some added burst has only added to their ridiculous damage. Monks have without a doubt some of the strongest bursts in Shadowlands right now. The new touch of death also means dropping a target to 15% will mean instant death, which is set to be unbelievably powerful for PvP. Overall though, high mobility, high damage, great utility, and insane burst secures Windwalker's spot in our A tier. Moving on, Unholy Death Knights are looking extremely promising going forward, gaining utility, defensives, and damage baseline into their kit. AMZ and Lichborn are both now baseline, opening up more options for PvP talents, and were two very strong tools in an Unholy Death Knights kit. Damage has been greatly improved upon, with Mastery now affecting pet damage, as well as buffs to Dark Transformation, Army of the Damned, and Apocalypse. Unholy's kit was already strong, having powerful slows, high consistent damage, and being incredible durable. And this has only improved upon with a lot of very nice changes for PvP with improved burst, strong covenant abilities, added baseline utility, and just all around strong changes. Joining Unholy in our A tier, we've got their Frost counterparts. Frost Death Knights again have benefited from the baseline additions of AMZ and Lichborn, but that's not the reason they're so high on our tier list. Frost, as we know from Legion, revolves solely around the Chill Streak mechanic, paired up with the Annoyance of Delirium. Well, this is still very impactful, but the whole spec does not revolve around it anymore. Most excitingly, and partly the reason, is the return of Two-Handed Frost. This overall makes Frost baseline damage a lot more impactful giving Obliterate 25% more damage and Killing Machine a higher chance of proccing. This combined with the fact that Killing Machine has also been buffed to now cause your Obliterate to deal Frost damage makes Two-Handed Frost capable of insane DPS on all armor types as well as benefiting from Mastery. So not only will you have to worry about Chill Streak and the added grip from the Abomination Limb Necrolord Covenant ability combined with the power of Delirium, but Frost Death Knights will also be pumping obscene amounts of burst damage. Frost is definitely the superior Death Knight spec right now, but Unholy is still incredibly strong, both worthy of our A tier spot and would be S tier if it wasn't for our final addition to this tier list. Before we get to our S tier though, let's quickly recap on our tier list as a whole. Alright, this is the moment you've all been waiting for and it's finally here. The last spec is considered the king of Shadowlands beta right now, and is without a doubt head and shoulders above almost any other spec in the game, let alone just melees. I am of course talking about sub rogues. I mean, come on, we couldn't have an expansion without rogues at the top of the PvP food chain. Where do I start? Sub inherently is one of the best specs when it comes to PvP. Having insanely high lockdown with the ability to sap and cheap shot continuously thanks to Shadow Dance. Previously, their biggest weakness was their lack of consistent pressure. Well, Sub has received nothing but good things in Shadowlands. The addition of Poison, Slice and Dice returning, and Fine Weakness now being baseline have helped to push them over the edge. Rupture also makes a return for Sub as now you have access to Wound Poison and Crippling, giving you a slow and mortal strike effect. Still lacking in the consistent damage department, Sub heavily makes up for it with its very short consistent burst windows something which excels in setup PvP compositions like Rogue Mage or Thug Cleave for instance. 
Oh, and those happen to be shaping up to be the two strongest comps on beta right now. It is worth noting though that a lot of subs power is currently coming from Legendary and Covenants, specifically these two. So to sum it all up, nothing competes with sub right now. But again, this is all subject to change. If sub gets some tuning, we'll see Warriors, Death Knights, and Windwalkers climb up onto our S tier. All right, everyone, that's going to be it for our Shadowlands beta tier list. Hopefully this has given you some good indications on what's looking good going into Shadowlands Arena. As always though, we'll be back as soon as patch notes and tuning is finalized with a more solidified tier list. But for now, thanks for watching and be sure to subscribe for more up-to-date Shadowlands and BFA content. Thanks for watching.